Cleopatra's precise heritage is a point of scholarly debate. There's no evidence that she was black. I do not grant private audiences to unidentified persons. In all honesty, Cleopatra seems to be more famous than any ruler of ancient Egypt. No one currently on Earth was alive during Cleopatra VII's reign, but we can say a whole lot about her. Different books, movies, and even stories didn't fail to immerse us in the life and reign of the enigmatic queen. But what they have failed to tell us are the weird things about Cleopatra. From the ugly truth about her marriage to her beauty regimen, these are the weird things you didn't know about Cleopatra. By your authority as pro-council of Rome, you will cede to Egypt immediately the following territories. Number 13. Cleopatra's Real Appearance Okay, let's start with Cleopatra's appearance. Even if you never read anything about Cleopatra, you must have a certain picture of her in your mind. Most likely, Elizabeth Taylor's. But the one who cast Elizabeth Taylor as Cleopatra might not have done that if the likes of Roman historian Cassius Dio didn't describe her as a woman of surpassing beauty. But was Cleopatra the beauty she is often depicted as? Recently, archaeologists discovered coins that had Cleopatra's face on them, and to their utmost disappointment, she was no beauty queen. At least that face was nothing like Elizabeth Taylor's. There are plenty of coins recovered with portraits of Cleopatra on them, and they all generally repeated the same features. Let's take a moment to analyze this image together. Look at that prominent nose, the sloping forehead, her sharply pointed chin, thin lips, and hollow-looking eye sockets. It's hard to believe, right? That's why many who have seen this image have blamed it on the artist who drew the picture. Well, some facial features may have been slightly exaggerated, but you should also consider that Cleopatra was the queen. If anything, the best of the best artists must have drawn the picture. Maybe what was considered beauty at the time changed in our time, or maybe no one dared to say the queen was not beautiful. Either way, there must be something no one alive can tell us. What is weird is despite being proclaimed as a beauty goddess, Cleopatra tried so hard to maintain beauty at all costs. Let's talk about number 12, Cleopatra's beauty regimen. Generally, the ancient Egyptians were known for their beauty rituals, but Cleopatra took things up a notch. Her beauty rituals were so progressive that many of her secrets are still relevant today. She used Dead Sea salts, which are said to contain natural healing properties. She also used coal a lot. And of course, that was evident in her representations. Although Egyptians generally used coal, Cleopatra owned it by using coal to create her famous cat eye look that she has owned for more than 5,000 years. It's a beautiful thing to know that Cleopatra cared so much for her skin like most people do these days. Many people resort to products containing milk and honey because honey has hydrating ability and milk has moisturizing properties. And that was exactly what Cleopatra did too, only that she used these things in their raw form. And yes, she had milk baths. This is probably the most famous and eccentric beauty technique that Cleopatra used in her beauty routine. The lactic acid in the milk was known for exfoliating and rejuvenating the skin. This means her skin must have been soft too. Finally, she used henna, which is well known for its decorative and ceremonial use on hands, arms, and faces, particularly in the Middle East and Asia. But as for Cleopatra, it was more than that. She used henna as a nail polish and also used it to dye her fingernails to protect them. Although it sounds good, it is kind of too much for a beauty goddess. What do you think? Talking about goddesses, Cleopatra might have been a real goddess. Number 11. The Goddess Isis Incarnate What evidence do we have? Well, Cleopatra said so herself. She proclaimed herself as Goddess Isis's incarnate. But can we even blame her? It was a common thing for ancient rulers of Greece and Rome to link themselves with gods just to claim divine power or influence. And if Cleopatra was known for anything other than her beauty, it is that she loved to stay in power. Goddess Isis is a powerful Egyptian goddess. She is famed as the sister and wife of Osiris. Yeah, that happened. Isis married her brother, who is also a god, and together they gave birth to a child named Horus. Isis presided over motherhood, the afterlife, life cycles, and reincarnation. This means coming back to the world should not be her problem. While it is not clear if Cleopatra is truly Isis's incarnate, 
Cleopatra dressed herself as Isis for ceremonial events and often looked to religious prophecy to justify her actions. And to make things weird, she also married her brother. Number 10. The Incestuous Marriage When Cleopatra was very young, rivals ousted her father from Egypt, replacing him with his daughter, Berenice IV. As Cleopatra's father left for Rome, she followed. There, he gained support to retake the throne. Using this support, he overthrew and killed his daughter, Berenice. In 52 BCE, Cleopatra's father made her his co-regent, and they ruled together until his death a year later. After Cleopatra's father died in 51 BCE, Cleopatra and her brother Ptolemy XIII, who was around 10 years old, became co-rulers of Egypt. This reflected their father's wishes, and, as was the political custom at the time, they married each other. Soon, however, her brother and husband drove her out of Egypt. Years later, Cleopatra gained more power and also killed her brother and co-ruler Ptolemy XIV to replace him with her son, Caesarion. Number 9 her unusual ancestry. Though Cleopatra reigned in Egypt, she was a Macedonian. How is this even possible? Cleopatra's racial background is a little complicated, so follow closely. She was born in early 69 BC as the descendant of a line of Egyptian kings in a dynasty that went back 250 years. Her ancestor Ptolemy I, a companion of Alexander the Great, founded the dynasty in the late 4th century BC. Ptolemy was Macedonian Greek in origin, and because he grew up at the royal court of Alexander's father in Macedonia, the northern part of the Greek peninsula, he established himself as king of Egypt in the convulsive years after Alexander's death. The descent passed through six successor Ptolemies until it reached Cleopatra's father. So Cleopatra was no more than eight generations away from being pure Macedonian Greek. So about the mothers. Generally, it is difficult to trace women in a lineage and even in royal dynasties. For the first six generations, the wives of the ruling Ptolemies also came from the same Macedonian background as their husbands. So until the time of Cleopatra's great-grandfather, the ethnic makeup of the dynasty was still pure Macedonian Greek. Two of her ancestors married their sisters, thus reinforcing the Macedonian ethnicity. This was where it all became uncertain. Although Cleopatra's grandfather had two wives of traditional Macedonian background, he seems to have had at least one concubine whose origin is unknown, and that may have been Cleopatra's grandmother. While we do not know at all, the little we know shows that even if Cleopatra was ever an Egyptian, she was more of a Macedonian than Egyptian. Number 8. Cleopatra's Multilingual Ability Cleopatra's origin might have been the reason she could speak Greek and Egyptian, but strangely, she spoke nine languages. Cleopatra spoke Greek, Egyptian, Ethiopian, Aramaic, Syriac, Median, Parthian, an Arabic language, and the Troglodytes language. Some reports even included Latin, but since it's not generally considered true, let's take out Latin. You already have an idea why Cleopatra could speak Koine Greek the name given to the ancient Greek language spoken at the time, which has now developed into modern Greek. This would have been Cleopatra's main language, and the language that was used in her government because the Ptolemaic rulers generally only spoke Greek and refused to learn other languages. But Cleopatra was different. Cleopatra learned to speak different languages, including the languages of those who resided in her kingdom. Her thirst for power and knowledge is truly unmatched. Number 7. Cleopatra's Vast Knowledge Talking about knowledge, you don't think Cleopatra amassed that much power only because of her looks, do you? This enigmatic queen could be called one of the greatest intellectuals of her time. Since the start of the oldest civilization, women were able to become independent rulers, but they never stayed long on the throne except they had specific skills. It is no wonder why someone like Cleopatra, who didn't have it easy since the beginning of her life, took things seriously. Cleopatra's father wanted to become king so bad but one of the things that hindered him was his lack of skills. At the time, Egypt was already dominated by the Romans, and it was almost like there would be no more great Egyptian rulers. However, Cleopatra changed history. Apart from being multilingual, she studied geography, history, astronomy, international diplomacy, mathematics, alchemy, medicine, zoology, economics, and more. She tried to gain all the knowledge of the world, but you know, no one can have it all. Number 6. 
the grand entrance. Critics aside, Joseph Mankiewicz outdid himself in his 1963 movie titled Cleopatra. If you didn't enjoy anything else, you must enjoy the glamorous Elizabeth Taylor who took on the great role of being Cleopatra. But of all the beautiful scenes, there's this spectacular scene where Cleopatra made a grand entry into Rome. The costume, the splendor, the sets, and the background music all painted a picture of Cleopatra entering Rome in style. But did she really go to Rome to meet Caesar? And if she did, did she enter it with such pomp and splendor? What we know is Roman law prohibited foreign rulers from entering the forum. Most likely, Cleopatra may have been received outside the gates of Rome and politely whisked away to Caesar's villa by the river Tiber. No doubt she received a grand welcome. People may truly have lined up the roads for her carriage, but maybe Caesar received her along with some of his senators. And if we are to consider the situation of Egypt at the time, Cleopatra most likely would not be able to afford to travel in a giant and expensive tour fleet. Egypt was just recovering from the Alexandrian War, which lasted over ten months, and had strained an already weakened kingdom as a result of Cleopatra's father significantly mismanaging the finances. To get to Rome, Cleopatra would have made a long, treacherous journey across the seas, or along the Levantine, Turkish, and Greek coasts. Therefore, it is unlikely she would have pulled that off. But do we think she could have done that? Of course. It's a yes for someone who took bold actions like being, number five, a naval officer. Even in the present world with technology to aid, women who dare to combine so many things find it really hard. But Cleopatra was no ordinary woman. She was very young when she got into power, but she managed to stay there for 21 of her 39 years on Earth. She was fierce and bold and did everything in her power to maintain her power. Among many other things, she did to maintain control was to optimize her social status, femininity, and charm, earning her titles of fashion icon, military leader, and even murderer. Cleopatra personally led a fleet of ships into battle and helped to organize war efforts. And as for her rivals who were her siblings, she wiped them all out. With all we have discussed, you must think Cleopatra didn't have a heart to love. Well, she had romantic relationships with men, just that we are not sure of how she genuinely felt. Number four, Cleopatra's relationship with Julius Caesar and influence on Roman politics. This love affair is not like the ones you've seen. It is one of history's most notorious relationships. Indeed, this relationship between the intelligent, bold, and charismatic queen and the influential Roman dictator has captivated historians and the wider public. They met in Alexandria in the summer of 48 BCE, while there was a turmoil of power struggle between Cleopatra and her brother. Cleopatra formed an alliance built on mutual political needs and romantic attraction with Caesar, and as a result, ancient Egypt was transformed. Cleopatra was politically sound, and so she was able to secure Caesar's loyalty when they met, seducing him with her intelligence, elegance, and charisma. But this relationship was not all about romance. It was built on the mutual political need for each other. Cleopatra needed to be on Caesar's side because she needed protection against Ptolemy, her brother, to secure her position as queen. And Caesar needed Cleopatra for her vast wealth. Yeah, Cleopatra was believed to have been the world's richest woman at the time. The wealth was much needed to fund Caesar's armies and resources so that he could return to power in Rome. He thus took the opportunity to form an alliance that would serve them both well. Because Caesar was very powerful, he used his authority to declare Cleopatra and Ptolemy XIII to once again be joint rulers. Ptolemy and his advisors, however, sensed Cleopatra's influence over Caesar, and so opposed this arrangement. Instead, they laid siege to the palace in Alexandria, trapping Cleopatra and Caesar inside for several months. But it didn't go on forever. Roman reinforcements arrived in Alexandria, freeing the couple. Since Caesar and his wife regained their freedom, a full-scale war erupted between Cleopatra and Ptolemy. But Caesar's military was stronger, they were able to triumph over Ptolemy's forces in what was called the Battle of the Nile. Following this, Ptolemy was drowned in the river, a traditional way to celebrate a victor's conquest. Cleopatra was restored to the throne after this war, and she accordingly reigned together with another even younger brother, the 11-year-old Ptolemy XIV, who, in keeping with tradition, became the new husband. Even so, 
the relationship between Caesar and Cleopatra remained solid for years. Number 3. Cleopatra's Children The relationship between Caesar and Cleopatra resulted in a son in 47 BC, though allegedly illegitimate. Cleopatra named him Caesarian to demonstrate his relationship to Caesar. But after Caesar's death, Cleopatra married Mark Anthony after divorcing Octavia, his wife. Together, Cleopatra and Anthony had three children, a set of twins named Cleopatra Selene and Alexander Helios, both born in 40 BC, and the younger son, Ptolemy Philadelphus, born in 36 BC. Scorned Octavia decided to invade Anthony and Cleopatra at Alexandria, where Anthony committed suicide when he heard that Cleopatra had died. After that, Cleopatra also committed suicide, leaving their children orphaned. The children were then taken to Rome to be cared for by Octavia Minor. The two boys who would have posed a threat to Octavian when they came of age may have been murdered later or died from illness, and both boys ceased to be mentioned after 29 BC. Caesarian also met his demise shortly after the death of his mother and his stepfather, but Princess Cleopatra survived. In 20 BC, Octavia arranged her marriage to King Juba II of Numidia in Africa. As the last surviving member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, the emperor provided her with a huge dowry and she became Rome's ally. Number 2. The Death of Cleopatra Do you think Cleopatra's life was mysterious? Her death was even more mysterious. It was said that Cleopatra allowed herself to be bitten by an asp or a cobra. But is it true? After Anthony fell on his sword, it was said that Cleopatra feared losing her kingdom, and so she committed suicide herself together with her two handmaidens. According to the story, Cleopatra sent a note to Octavian requesting that she be buried next to Anthony, after which Octavian sent his guards to the mausoleum immediately. On getting there, the guards broke down the door and met Cleopatra and her maids dead. This theory has a lot of hiccups. Firstly, cobras were typically at least five feet long and could grow up to eight feet, which would be too long to be smuggled into Cleopatra's mausoleum, as the story goes. Two, not all snake bites are deadly, and even those that are deadly kill their victims slowly and painfully, making it hard to believe that a snake was able to kill Cleopatra and her maids within the short period it took for Octavian to send his guards. There was no eyewitness to what exactly happened and there was no written account. Much of what we know today came from the stories of Octavian, who some have suggested is a suspect himself. Octavian was Octavia Mark Anthony's ex-wife brother, so he certainly had a motive to want Cleopatra dead. No one could have thought of investigating Cleopatra's death further because she was someone who could do that to herself and even more. As for what really happened in that mausoleum, Plutarch may have said it best. The truth of the matter no one knows. Number 1. The Lost Tomb of Cleopatra After the deaths of Cleopatra and Anthony, Emperor Augustus agreed that they be buried next to each other. The two were mummified, a common method used in preserving dead bodies by drying out the human remains to keep them from rotting. After this process of desiccation, most of the internal organs were removed except the heart, because the Egyptians believed that it was the key to the afterlife. These organs were then placed in a separate jar and buried with the corpse. The body was then wrapped in linen and placed in a tomb with a selection of worldly possessions and sealed. You see, Cleopatra is mysterious even in death, and her tomb is slightly controversial. Initially, it was believed that the tomb was outside of ancient Egypt's capital Alexandria, underneath the Taposiris Magna Temple, better known as the Great Tomb of Osiris. In 2019, further evidence such as mummies, figurines of Isis, and coins bearing the images of Cleopatra and Anthony found in the same vicinity shows that Cleopatra's tomb could just be there. However, in a plot twist, experts have claimed that the tomb may just be buried under the great tomb of Osiris. No one has found the tomb yet, and the mysteries surrounding Cleopatra's life and death no one has solved yet. Thanks for watching. While you are here, click the video on the screen to watch more amazing content.